In the world of Panorama, Augustine the Prince found everything that he loved and everything that he knew how to do, producing images, utilizing his techniques. A new dimension of his life began, show business. There was a huge temptation to push it even further, to add sound and projections, but also movement, budding proof that one day everything would move and come to life. Le Prince wasn't wrong. More than a century later, we're still going to the movies to watch images come alive. Here's a picture of the whole family. And if they seem proud, they should be. It was Daguerre himself behind the camera. Louis Daguerre, the inventor of this new photography technique, the daguerreotype. Even back then, we can tell Augustine isn't really there. His gaze wanders. Maybe he's trying to understand how an image can be captured. It's funny. This photo may have caught the birth of his lifelong passion. For the rest of his days, Augustine would be a man obsessed, both as an artist and a technician, with the appropriation of light. In 1866, John Whitley, a friend of Augustine's, introduces him to his father, Joseph. Mr. Whitley soon hires Augustine to work in his foundry and machine plant in Leeds, England. Mr. Whitley also has a daughter, Elizabeth, whom Augustine would soon take as his wife. For Augustine, there's a little bit of everything in the family Whitley. Friendship, work, and love. Augustine designed the products and traveled throughout Europe to promote them. But sadly, the Whitley family business was poorly managed and was soon on the verge of collapse. Augustine and Elizabeth decide to open a school for the applied arts. They design and perfect the process of putting images into enamel, and they push their innovation even further by reproducing photography. They had a great customer already, a banker, Mr. Wilson. He collected hundreds from all time periods in all provinces throughout France. Augustine and Wilson became great friends. Le Prince and his wife immigrate to New York. Elizabeth teaches art in a school for the deaf and blind. And meanwhile, Augustine arranges a meeting, the meeting of his life. With another Frenchman, Théophile Poilpeau, Poilpo is already famous and adored. He creates panoramas, realistic paintings with almost trompe l'oeil like precision. It happened in a darkened room, what we used to know as a camera. Images of the world outside were transmitted directly through a hole pierced in the wall. This was the emergence of the principle of photography itself, but still steps away from learning how to record these moving images in order to project them when and where we want. Donc on atteint un certain point de virtuosité mais qui est tout à fait euh, fugitif puisque de toute façon les images ne sont pas fixées. Donc la grande idée du 19e ça va être très précisément de fixer les images de la, de la caméra obscura. Hein. Augustin Le Prince wanted to be the first to be able to do this. But becoming an inventor doesn't just involve fiddling about. Becoming an inventor is a lifelong pursuit. The entrance into this world of uncertainty follows winding paths that often lead to nowhere. For Augustine, it meant sacrificing his work and the social status that came with it. Being an inventor changes how others see you. Nobody can know, not even yourself, exactly what the results of your efforts will be, or even if you'd ever managed to achieve anything at all. In 1887, Louis Le Prince decided to dedicate his life to something that didn't even yet have a name. In a restless 19th century, everyone seemed to want to invent something. Science and technology had become one. Over the millennia, we had discovered fire, water, an animal-powered energy. Suddenly, we saw the emergence of gas, steam, 
and electrical energy. Nightfall in Paris Avenue de l'Opéra is illuminated. It's the city of lights now. We're even able to remotely listen to theatrical performances. Anything seems possible. It's just a question of time. The race is on. <laughs>